Today our fight is about the solar project, that they want to ruin this entire valley by putting industrial solar uh, energy projects here. I call them dirty green projects. These large industrial installations sound green. They're really not green. And that's a point we want people in Los Angeles to understand. The Owens Valley is, is on the east side of the Sierra Nevada mountains, and it's about 200 miles north of Los Angeles. It's like a national park. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, you know, no matter where you've been in the world, um, this, there's nothing else like it. It's surrounded by beautiful mountains on both sides. It's the deepest valley was the name of it in the early days when Mary Austin was writing about our valley. This is Los Angeles' playground. There is the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. They want to build the Southern Owens Valley Solar Ranch on a 1,200-acre site. Rather than having it individually, like they're talking about here in Santa Monica, on everybody's rooftop and decentralizing, they're talking about centralizing, putting large arrays of panels inappropriately in that part of the Owens Valley and then moving and losing some of that power, bringing it back to LA. Because you lose about 30 to 40% just moving energy through the wires. There's, there's other avenues, there's more efficient ways to, to bring energy sustainability rather than desecrate you know, open space land and, and, and it actually land that has significance, historical and cultural significance. That's why it's not just people here in LA that, that need to be you know, up in arms about this, it's everybody. This affects all of us. I don't care if you live here, live in the Owens Valley, live in New York, it doesn't matter where you are. This is an issue that affects everybody. There is such a deep connection and tie between Los Angeles and the Owens Valley. And that, that connection has been there for over a century now, which started with the export of Owens Valley water through the, through the aqueduct. So the city of LA um, would not have been built if not for diverting the whole Owens River into the LA aqueduct. An area that was actually the breadbasket of California um, it's hard to imagine that now when you see it, but when you take a whole river and put it in an aqueduct, which they do, and a tiny trickle goes back down to Owens Lake, that's what you're left with. They consider all the resources to be plentiful without realizing uh, what they're taking away from other people. So they got the water. Now they, now they want their son too. You know, and they want to cover pristine open, open spaces with solar panels. You know, 1,200 acres or more, enough is enough. I don't know how many people realize what goes into place with a solar PV project. It's about two square miles. They actually have to remove all vegetation on the site. They have to treat the soil with herbicides and uh, soil consolidants. When you start one of these type of projects, it will continue to evolve and, and continue to, to create impacts throughout the Owens Valley to where this, this place will not look like the open space that it is today. Our biggest industry around here is tourism. That's what people come here for, open space. My people lived in the Owens Valley for what wasn't the Owens Valley, we called it Payahut or Payahunata, which means you know it's, it has to do with the river. The water is always flowing down that, in that valley. Payahunadu which means the place where water flows. And our people called it that because water flowed throughout the valley. Now, of course, things have changed. Throughout this hundred years, water hasn't been flowing in the same places throughout our valley. It's been flowing down to Los Angeles. It's just our people have been here for, for thousands of years. We can see that through petroglyphs that are dotted throughout the landscape. Uh, we can see that through irrigation ditches that have existed that are dried now. And you wonder, where did the water come from? Because at this point, it doesn't look like water would be flowing. And yet, our people had created a very extensive irrigation network to, to be able to, to not only um, water areas that, that they desired seed lands, but also to be able to, to create a habitat uh, for, for other species of life. Most places, the federal government does censuses, right? And in the um, Owens Valley, the Indian census was done by LA Department of Water and Power. And they came out with these reports describing 
the Indians that lived there and what they did. And they, it would, uh, these reports were all entitled The Indian Problem. The Owens Valley is like 90% federal land. The rest of it is owned by the LA Department of Water and Power. There's 1% private land in the whole county of Inyo. That's why there's hardly anybody who lives here in the valley, because LA owns everything else. So one way or the other, we're dealing with another example of desecrating native lands with, with, with these solar developments and, and, and wind farms, and proposed wind farms. When is it going to stop? I mean, how many years of broken treaties with every single Native American nation in this, in this country? Whenever someone wanted something, usually natural resources, in this case, sun, say, oh, you can move. You, you don't matter. There's a lot of archaeology, both prehistoric and historic stuff. They started doing cultural resources surveys. We had representatives from Lone Pine and Big Pine on those surveys. And um, so what they, what they found, and they were, I think they were really surprised. We weren't surprised, but there was just thousands of cultural resources everywhere, which we know people lived everywhere, you know, and you're, you got the river there and the mountains here and stuff. And they surveyed like 15 miles straight of desert and probably about a couple miles wide, two, three miles wide, and didn't find any place where there was no cultural resources. Solar project that LA has proposed uh, looks to, to change the entire environment in which our people have lived for thousands of years. We, we're certainly concerned with those impacts. We're concerned because of what that does to our culture, what that does to our environment, what that does to the many organisms which also rely on our environment. We, we see a, an impact that doesn't need to happen. Uh, they're looking to, to create a 200 megawatt facility and, uh, and what that will do to the area is totally scrape it down to, uh, down to nothing before they build up again. As a child and growing up here, this valley was very self-sustaining. There was a lot of resources. We had ranchers throughout the valley. There was a railroad that ran the whole distance of the valley into Nevada down to um, Los Angeles. Um, that was removed by um, the Department of Water and Power. And then L.A. came, <laughs> and that changed the story again for the ranchers uh, and for our people because water was there, and then all of a sudden it was not there. Because that's been the relationship between the extraction of water um, from the Owens Valley um, to create a much bigger Los Angeles than ever would have existed. They've dried up our valley. Now they want to bring in solar projects to cover up their damage. And there's no reason to. There's enough space in LA and different places that they don't need to come in here and ruin this area anymore. Well, it's right across from the Manzanar, an internment camp for World War II, where the uh, Japanese people that lived in LA and around the country, they interned them and put on reservations, hidden away. It was no good to steal all their property and take them out of their homes and take all their property and put them in just in captivity. That stole their lives like it did to the tribes. And there's over 60 sites over there with Pinto Points and all these, all these other sites that were over 6,000 years old. And now they're just going to bulldoze them, grade them all out and ruin it, just kill it. Like colonialism does. It destroys your history and rewrites it. And if they destroy it, then you were never there because there's no proof of you ever being there. Uh, FDR signed that executive order number 9066 that said all Japanese on the West Coast have to vacate. So the Justice Department called it war relocation camps. But, uh, but when I got there, uh, it, it was, I don't think it was a relocation camp at all. Uh, there were soldiers there. And not regular soldiers, they were armed soldiers. They carried rifles, and they carried not just plain rifles, but they had bayonets in front. And so they called it relocation center, but actually it was more of a concentration camp, and by any definition it was. We've really got to know people with the Manzanar Committee, because they care as much about our valley as we do. The reason they made Manzanar into a national park was to preserve that feeling to teach your grandchildren how it was being there and you can go there and you can feel the isolation so the surrounding landscape is so important there. You can see a long way and 
unlike what DWP officials are saying, there isn't a single point at Manza that you can't see four miles across to the east side of the Owens River where this solar ranch would be. What would literally destroy Manzanar's viewshed. Given that this is not just a Japanese American or Native American issue or, or just a local Owens Valley issue, it's something that everybody should, should be standing up and opposing because this is our history as a people, as, as Americans. What is to say that once the money dries up, these things aren't going to look like a, you know, solar dump? We think that there are some better solutions to these than taking large sections of untouched land, pristine land, land that's incredibly important to the Owens Valley and to those of us that live here, completely changing that land forever with technology that, if you do the research, is it's showing that the technology is quickly becoming outdated. The push is for point of use, renewable energy. The model is moving away from these giant big installations and closer to home. LADWP has to have a boss. Somebody has to be in control of them. And they said, well, that's the mayor and the city council of Los Angeles. So if they have a say in what LADWP does, they're elected officials. And if we can just convince the LA voters, you know, let them know we're up here, we're concerned, you have a vote, we don't. They're only getting built because there is a lot of federal money being channeled to them. We need to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and coal. But the way to do that is not to create other problems by having industrial solar and sensitive habitats in the desert, um, in the high desert in Owens Valley, and other places where it's not appropriate. If we want to change LA, that change has to come from within, and we have to reduce demand. And the best way we can do that is through conservation programs and solar. And Santa Monica is an excellent example. We're sitting here at a park, and if I turn in any direction, um, I can see a large-scale solar. I can see it up on a uh, subsidized housing building, 502 Colorado off 5th Street. I can see it on a parking garage over there with a huge uh, solar arrays. Down at the um, pier, the Ferris wheel is run by solar. Um, and then throughout the whole community, if I looked and scanned over, if I did an eagle's flight over, I could see solar panels all over the city. The idea of getting independent um, is what the city of Santa Monica is actually going to do and is what LA should look at doing, both on water and on energy. And so that, that battlefield is going to be Los Angeles City Hall. You know, they should contact their city council. They should. We have a new general manager. Um, I would contact her and let her know that these issues are alive and well, and people are concerned about them, and people want to have a local community solar implemented. In thinking about that, that yeah, it, we have the available resource here, just the same as they do in Owens Valley. I would say arguably even more, because Los Angeles isn't bordered by 10 to 14,000 foot peaks on either side, so you don't have those shadows. But the availability of solar in Los Angeles is equal. And so why not put our efforts into, into developing it on top of roofs, on top of parking lots, on top of corporate buildings, large, large buildings that, that are already built, that are already there in Los Angeles, that have the available space. Be aware, raise your awareness, know how you individually and your use of power impacts other life forms. Understand that we all, we're all players at this, in this game and, and we all can make a difference if that's what we want. Um, and just, yeah, be receptive to one another and, and, and care for one another. I mean, what more could we ask? Mm -hmm.